Stephen West has become somewhat of a household name in the knitting community, and that is for very good reason. He's an exceptionally talented designer, creating some of the most beautiful, whimsical, and avant-garde knitwear pieces. His designs transcend trends and blur the lines between clothing and artwork, and his focus on marrying vibrant colors with unique and graphic design and construction elements set him apart as a designer from all other knitwear designers out there. However, both for these reasons and despite all of this I have had a really difficult time committing to knit a Stephen West design and so I decided to set out and challenge myself to find 10 Stephen West patterns I would actually knit and for today's video I plan on sharing those 10 designs with you <music> Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I'm excited for today's video. It's been a topic that's been on my mind for quite some time and I think it might be one that interests you as well. When I set out to choose a pattern to knit, there are three things that I keep in mind always when committing to a pattern, and that is functionality, practicality, and wearability. And practicality and wearability can actually fall into the same category if the item I'm planning on knitting is not necessarily something I would be wearing on my body. But regardless, these three things are front of mind anytime I decide to commit to a knitting pattern or anytime I'm just shopping around for a knitwear design to knit. And with those three things front of mind, Stephen West patterns just tend tend to not fit the bill. I don't find them to be very practical. They seem to be rather difficult to wear because of how vibrant and graphic they are as it relates to my personal preferences. Now, as it relates to functionality, I don't think that there's anything more or less functional to Stephen West designs than any other knitwear design out there. So really it's more about the practicality and wearability of Stephen West designs that give me pause. These are my preferences and this is why I have shied away from Stephen West patterns. And this is also why I've challenged myself to find 10 designs by Stephen West that I would actually knit for myself because I feel that they are wearable, practical, and functional. And I did keep in mind pushing my boundaries a little bit and going a little bit out of my comfort zone with these because I really feel that Stephen West designs patterns for those of us that are adventurous, wanting to go out of our comfort zone, wanting to try new techniques, wanting to play with color. That's who he designs these patterns for. And honestly, he does the best job at this because there is not a Stephen West pattern that you can knit that doesn't provide you with myriad new techniques, awesome color opportunities or pop opportunities as he likes to call them, and really just unique artistic pieces to add to your collection. He's honestly the master. However, I'm just not comfortable enough yet to make that commitment, but these 10 patterns might just change things for me. Now, all of these patterns are, of course, by Stephen West, and they range from as early as 2009 to as recent as 2022. And I thought that was really interesting because I found that most of the designs I kind of gravitated towards from his collection were his much more early designs, things back anywhere from 2009 to 2014. I found that most of those kind of ticked the boxes for me, whereas some of his more new designs, things that he's been uh, bringing out more recently, seem to be a little more outside of my comfort zone and something I'd have to do a lot of work to warm up to. These patterns can be found over on my Ravelry page in my favorite section in bundles based on the theme of this video. And I will link to that down below in the description box. If you'd like to learn more about how to organize your favorites into bundles using the Ravit app or using Ravelry, I have a video for that. I'll pop it up in the top of the screen now. If you'd like to check that out after you finish watching this video, it'll give you a little bit more of an insight into the Ravit app in general. Okay, the first pattern that I've picked out here is called Loxley. I love this for a number of reasons. The first, I love the design. I love the idea of a hood slash shawl combination. I also really love the muted colors that were used here. I feel like that kind of deviates from what we would usually expect from Stephen West, but bear in mind, this particular design was published in 2011. This is some of his earlier work, and I'm wondering if he just became more inspired by color later on. 
However, he does have some really early patterns that are super vibrant in color. This just happens to be one that is a little bit more reserved and more neutral. This is obviously a call to Robin Hood um, or Robin of Locksley because it has kind of that Robin Hood vibe to it. But I love this. I love that it can be both masculine and feminine. I really love that detail on the back, that flat section at the back of the head. It has, um, it's a garter stitch fabric for the majority of the body of the shawl. And he uses that really gorgeous I-cord edging that Stephen West is known for. And it just makes everything look so neat and tidy. So this is called Loxley. It is seven euro to purchase. It requires 580 yards of Barocco Blackstone tweed, which is an Aran weight yarn. Loxley begins by creating a rounded hood with short rows to create a sleek fitted shape. Then the long scarf ends continue with garter stitch and I-cord edges, which minimize purling. I think it's really, really cool. I would definitely knit this. I would definitely wear this, especially if I'm wearing a coat and I don't want to have to wear a hat but I want something to cover my head if it's windy and cold in the wintertime. I really love this. So this is Loxley, of course, by Stephen West. Okay, this next design is one that goes back to 2014. And I remember when this was released and I remember really loving it. Now, a lot of folks knit this in multiple colors, but I love this as a solid color piece. And this is the Dotted Rays shawl. Now, if you are a regular viewer of the podcast, you know that I'm not a big shawl knitter. And that's probably because I just don't wear shawls very very often, or I don't think about wearing them. I live in a warm climate, and even though we have cold winters, it's just not something that I consider. However, if I had a really nice hand knit shawl, I would absolutely wear it. So I'm always on the lookout for a shawl that's not too big, not too small, that can kind of be bunched up around the neck when it's cold outside, under a coat, something like that. And this particular shawl is definitely something like that. So this is called the Dotted Rays. It's a really cool, relatively small shawl that just uses yarn over eyelets and garter stitch. And a lot of folks, I really do remember a lot of folks doing, yeah, you can see here multiple colors in between each of the like the little sections. And I thought that was really cool too. However, I would absolutely knit this as a solid color shawl. I love this one here. A great way to use a really nice speckly yarn. It's a statement piece. A little bit of color would be a lot of fun for me with this. I just really like that. It seems relatively simple. It's another seven euro to purchase this. It requires 720 to 1,200 yards of fingering weight yarn, and it has two sizes. It says, this arched shawl begins at the center with only a few stitches while yarn over increases quickly expand the shape. Garter stitch short row wedges add length to one side, forming rays that gradually increase in size. That's just part of the ingenuity of Stephen West. He just thinks about how not only to create really beautiful and graphic designs, but ones that are just structurally pleasing to the eye. And I feel like this is definitely one of them. So this is the dotted rays. And I think it's great. That minty green color is fabulous. Okay, this next one is a design from 2022 and it features a color work kind of motif that's a little outside of my comfort zone, but on something small like this and something very functional like this, that pop of color and kind of element of avant-garde is really welcomed and really cool. And these are the Painting Bricks mittens. I love these. It's your basic mitten shape. So the shape of the mitten is very standard and very neutral in its construction but that pop of color and really interesting graphic nature there makes these super cool. Like I would absolutely knit these to the point where, I mean, I'm, I'm considering doing this for this coming fall or winter or something. Even if I knit these for my kids, my husband would wear these. I think they're really, really cool. I love the black. I love the black with those pops of color. It says that collect a colorful pile of DK and worsted weight yarns to knit these cozy winter mittens. Select a main color to frame the painterly contrast color pops for the bold brick motif. And I'm, I'm kind of intrigued by this colorway or by this color work technique generally. It does seem very outside of my comfort zone, but I'm warming up to it. And in these mittens, I just think it's great. So these are the painting brick mittens. Okay, I've always sort of told myself I would not knit myself pants. You just never know how things are going to be on a full grown adult, you know, 
woman's body, you know, and I have a relatively large derriere and you just have to plan for things like that. And I've, I don't know, I'm just not 100% comfortable knitting pants. However, Stephen West has a design called Sports, and it's a pair of shorts, and they're very retro and super short, and they have this little cutout on the side, and the way that he incorporates the color here, I really, really love it. And you guys, I actually really love these. I think that he pulls them off just beautifully. <laughs> But I also love the way they look on this girl here. Um, she has a very similar body shape to me, and so I can see myself wearing those. They are short, you know, like a little on the short, short side, but I imagine wearing them around the house when it's hot outside. I don't know, I dig these. So these are called sports. They um, are worsted weight, anywhere from 470 to 800 yards of yarn, and it comes in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 sizes, which is fantastic. It says, did you know that knitted shorts, knitted short shorts are the new shawl? These stylish suckers start with a wide hem followed by short row butt shaping and increases. See, that's what I need is I need short row butt shaping. Then the legs are divided and worked back and forth as decreases from little side slits for optimum leg exposure. I mean, you could go through the, <laughs> woo, okay, sassy. But yeah, I really, I love these. I think th these are really, really cool. Um, and it doesn't look like it would take too long. There's a lot of construction going on there. The difficulty rating is four and a half stars, but I don't know. I'm loving that. So those are the sports shorts by Stephen West. Okay, when I first saw this next pattern or this next design in the photos, it's a pair of socks. I thought that they had little pointy elf toes and I realized that it's just the color um, blocking that's happening on the socks that makes them look like that but they're really cool. So these are called Sockin. This is a design from 2013. These are knit in Istex Let Lopi yarn, and they're just a really cozy looking slipper sock. And I don't know if you can tell when you look at this at just like a quick glance, doesn't it kind of look like that one foot that's up has that pointed elf toe look to it? I don't know, it's really clever, very cool. It almost looks like you're wearing a pair of socks inside of a pair of slippers. It's, it's really neat. I love the stripey part at the cuff. It kind of gives it a little bit of a retro vibe. I'm really digging just like the whole idea of these. And I believe that's a garter stitch foot. Like the foot is garter stitch and the rest of the sock, the photos are kind of blurry, but that's really cool. I'm interested to know about the um, construction, but these are an Aran weight worsted weight sock requiring 170 to 220 yards. That's one skein of worsted weight yarn for the most part maybe a little bit more than that on the larger side. It says these quick to knit slipper socks start with a garter stitch sole and short row heel. A contrasting color is used to pick up stitches and work the top of the sock and stockinette stitch. Knit a simple ribbed tube with stripes for the leg of the sock and finish by knitting a rounded garter stitch toe. I think they seem really intuitive and pretty easy to knit and definitely doable if you're not really a sock knitter in the sense that you haven't knit a sock from like the top down to the toe up with you know standard sock construction, this might be a little bit more approachable to kind of break into your sock game. So I like that. So these are sock in and uh, I could totally see myself knitting these. Okay, when I decided to do this, I told myself that I had to try to go out of my comfort zone a little. I couldn't just stick to all the safe stuff. And this particular shawl is stepping out of my comfort zone in a much larger way than the painted bricks mittens was or were. Um, this is the painting rainbow shawl. And this is a design from February of 2022. And I think one of the things that really got me here were the combination of colors that were used in this sample that you see here. I love that combination of colors. It's vibrant with pops of color, but it seems relatively neutral at the same time. I love all of the different stripes there, and I love how we have perpendicular stripes along the edge of the shawl as well. I think that's very graphic and cool. And I could see having this wrapped around your shoulders if it's cold outside, and just being a little bit of that funky pop of color over the top of maybe a more neutral outfit or who cares, it doesn't matter what outfit you have on, this is just a really cool pop of color. Because the construction and stitch work here is pretty basic, you're doing some stockinette stitch with some garter, sti garter stitch ridges from what I can see, that really nice kind of color pop is, is welcome because other than that, the design is pretty simple. It says here, enjoy the smooth, relaxing rows and repetitive rhythm of this semicircular shawl. Two skeins of West Wool Bicycle frame eight shades of a Sayer silk mohair that decorate the rainbow stripes. 
The main color is one strand of fingering weight, while the contrast colors are lace weight held double for extra fluffy rainbow rays. That's really, really pretty. So you are using mohair if you're sticking with what it's asked for or what's asked for in the pattern. Fingering weight and lace weight held double, which is a fingering weight. 1,690 to 2,610 yards. So this is going to be hefty in the yardage department, but if you happen to have a lot of floofy yarn and fingering weight yarn in your stash, this could be a really excellent way to bust those skeins. So that is the Painting Rainbow Shawl by Stephen West. Now I love myself heavily textured fingerless mittens. I love that chunky, real earthy, rustic vibe to some really good mittens. And the Dustland mitts by Stephen West are definitely that. Now you see them here in a really bright kind of turquoisey teal color. It's more on the turquoise side than on the teal side. And I love that, but I love these in particular in this really awesome stone gray color here. Just look at how beautiful and like rustic and be just, oh, I love that so much. I love the stitch designs going on here. I love all of that really good texture. And those are all just knits and pearls. There's nothing crazy going on here. And that's just so fantastic. These are a pattern from 2011, one of his earlier designs. These are knit in fingering weight yarn, 210 yards. That's like half a skein of fingering weight yarn. They're one size and it says these casual fingerless mitts are easy to knit, but changes in the stitch pattern keep you engaged. Fingering weight yarn gives these comfy mitts the perfect amount of slouch and warmth. They're great for biking around town or working on the computer. And I think that they're just so great. These are fantastic. So that is the Dustland mitts. And there is also a Dustland shawl um, by Stephen West that kind of uses this same, I think there might be a pair of socks too, but that uses the similar texture motif going on here. I love free patterns. I love opportunities to use up stash yarn and I really love squishy blankets. And Stephen West's garter squish blanket is a fantastic one to satisfy all of those things. This is a free pattern. It's a really beautiful blanket, simple, Simple garter stitch so it's just potato chip knitting however it's using several different skeins of yarn because you're holding yarn I believe triple no I take that back excuse me you're holding two strands of worsted weight yarn double to create a bulky weight altogether and you're creating kind of like a striped motif so it's a really great way to use up extra skeins of worsted weight yarn that you have marling some yarns together holding two different colors together to create really interesting colors stripes. And I think that's a really great economical way to create something functional while also using yarn from your stash. Another thing I really love about this is not only is it garter stitch, so it's simple. He's using that really lovely I-cord edging. So it has a really clean edge. It folds flat. It just looks finished and polished. Sometimes um, plain garter stitch just has kind of an unfinished edge to it. If you're not slipping that first stitch or if you're not adding any kind of an edging, this cleans it up beautifully. And if this I-cord edging is applied like most of his others, it's really simple to execute. And look how he's marling colors. It looks to me like he's using one um, color all throughout the entire project and he's marling in additional colors of yarn to create those stripes. So he has one kind of background color throughout the entire blanket with the color changing as he adds new colors throughout. And I think that's so smart. Oh, I love that. You know what's what that's good for? That's good for if you happen to have a sweater quantity of worsted weight yarn that would work for the yardage that you need here, but you're no longer planning on knitting that sweater. You don't have any plans for that yarn. You want to use it for something. You could use it for something like this as that background color, and then you could pull out those individual skeins that you have in your stash to create those really fun stripes. So loving this. Again, it's free. It requires altogether anywhere from 3,240 to 3,245 yards of yarn using a 15 needle or a 10 millimeter needle. Obviously it's, well, no, I don't think that it's one size. It says one size here, but I think he gives you a baby blanket size. Nope, sorry, I'm confusing this with another blanket pattern that he has, um, but this is a one size bl uh, blanket. So it's going to be 66 inches by 48 inches. That's a generous size. I, I love this, absolutely love this. So that is the garter squish blanket. Okay, this next design is also free. It popped onto my radar, like I wanna say a few weeks ago, but it's a really early design. It's from 2009. It's a triangle shaped shawl, simple, stocking it stitch with garter stitch ridges. 
I love the simplicity. I love it in a solid color, but I love that it affords you some opportunities for color fun. And that is the Boneyard Shawl. So this requires a DK weight yarn. He's using um, West Wool Tandem, only 600 yards. And you guys look at how simple this is. I mean, if you're kind of keeping away from Stephen West designs because you think they're so avant-garde and colorful and all of these things, I challenge you to not only choose these ones that are more simple. I mean, a lot of his more complex ones, you could use, you know, more tame colors, things that are more neutral, but he does have designs that are really wearable and not simple and plain, but just pleasingly simple. And this is definitely one of those. I mean, look, those are garter ridges, stockinette sections, and then a really thick garter stitch hem, I guess you could say. A triangle shawl, it's so simple. You could play with color here, or you could make it solid and have it just be a staple shawl that you wear when it's chilly outside. Or you could knit this up in a really fun cotton blend yarn, something more suitable for summer. And if you live in a climate where in the summertime you have cold evenings, this is perfect for that. A really nice fireside shawl, if, if you will. And I love that it's free. It says the updated English PDF features options for make one left, make one right increases or yarn over increases along with two bind off options. And he has a free YouTube tutorial that goes along with it. It says the simple triangle shawl begins at the top center and increases towards the border. You can knit this shawl with any weight of yarn and continue the shape to make it as large as you wish. So this is the Boneyard shawl and this is definitely on my list of Stephen West designs, I would definitely knit. So when I was mentioning earlier about a blanket having two sizes, this next one is the one that I was referring to. I'm obsessed with this blanket. I, it's giving me, if you live in the United States or if you don't and are familiar with the show Roseanne, Roseanne had um, in their house on their couch, they had a granny square blanket over the back of their couch. It was just kind of like your classic granny square from what I can remember. But this design is still giving me Roseanne couch vibes in all the right ways. This is the painting honeycombs blanket and you guys, it is graphic with color opportunities and you could have so much fun with that. I love this technique that kind of gives me like intarsia vibes, but I know that it's not intarsia. So it's just really interesting to me. You guys, I love this. I really love this almost to the point that I'm seriously considering getting the yarn that I need for this because just look at that. That is so cool. And this photo here of it on this chair, and we, our couch in our um, living room is kind of like that um, Danish modern, mid-century modern type couch. I don't really like the couch. I mean, it looks nice. It's not the most comfortable, but it's that color. And I imagine that blanket on our couch. Oh my goodness. And look at this plant. Wow. I'm loving it. I love this. I mean, look at how great that looks on that chair. You can have so much fun with color here. This pattern is seven euro. It requires DK weight yarn anywhere from 1,460 yards to 3,300 yards. There are two sizes. So there's a baby blanket size and then there's like an over the couch like Afghan throw size. It says this blanket is filled with color opportunities as you knit the small baby blanket size or a large blanket for your couch. One color of DK weight yarn frames several color pops. The baby blanket features five color pops and the large size features eight color pops. The slip stitch technique is very easy to knit, making this blanket suitable for an adventurous beginner project. I mean, come on, you don't have to be a beginner knitter to enjoy an adventurous beginner project, right? Choose your colors and knit the blanket as big as you want. I love this. So this is the painting honeycombs blanket by Stephen West. Now, like I said at the beginning of the episode, I look for functionality, practicality, and wearability in the designs and patterns I choose to purchase or download from Ravelry or wherever I find them. If I'm going to knit it and take the time required to complete the project, I wanna know that it's functional, practical, wearable. Sometimes it's okay to go outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes it's okay to let one of those things slip a little bit to try something new. And I think that these Stephen West designs that I mentioned here today do that. I think that they are all functional, they are all wearable, and they're practical. They have color opportunities or opportunities. They're interesting and graphic, but overall they can really become a staple piece in anyone's wardrobe. And if you wanted to make them more avant-garde, you can adjust the colors just like you see in the photos that he provides. For a designer as talented and artistic as Stephen West, it's important to dive down the rabbit hole, even if you're just looking at his work. It's 
art. It really truly is. And anybody who can create a Stephen West design and have that finished piece have, have truly created a piece of art. And that is something to be appreciated. It's just hard sometimes for me to commit to doing that. So I'm happy that I discovered these 10 patterns. And I hope that this helps you as well dive down that Stephen West rabbit hole if you tend to be a little bit more reserved like I am. Thank you so much for taking the time and hanging out with me and listening to me ramble about 10 Stephen West patterns I would actually knit. If you took value from this video or learned anything, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe. I post new videos every Wednesday and every Sunday. Click the bell icon so you can be notified each time that happens. And until we meet on Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.